Healing Hands has arrived. It has been many long years waiting for the Healing Hands skill tree to come out so that we can finally specialize as a true paladin would. Now this is the third update in a series of blog posts that will be culminating on the 19th in the patch notes for the 1.0 launch of Last Epoch. And we're gonna go over the most recent one that just came out a few minutes ago as I'm recording this. And then we'll go over the other two that have already come out as well. But for those of you that haven't seen this yet, here it is. Healing Hands' skill tree. Okay, this is, uh, this is, it's exciting. Okay, so as a baseline, Healing Hands is an ability which casts a medium-sized area of effect, which heals all allies for an immediate burst of speed and applies healing over time for three seconds. You can see it here, you know, it's just like, yeah. You know. Now the Cleric's Hammer node gives you a chance and up to 100% chance to actually use Healing Hands on when you directly use a melee attack and hit at least one enemy, and that is crazy. Um, it does less upfront healing for indirect casts. However, the healing over time remains the same. I mean, if you're just looking for sustain, this is amazing. All you need is that one thing. And it might actually be better to only get one or two nodes in this because you might be attacking really fast. Okay, Hands of Aurelius. We are doing, wow. Okay, when you directly cast Smite, you have a chance to cast Healing Hands around the target location. This consumes 70% of its mana cost. And then you can, and then you can make Healing Hands hit enemies within its area of effect at, with 200% added spell damage effectiveness. That's crazy. When we look down here, we're seeing it. It looks pretty. It look, I mean, it looks dope. So if you're looking to play like a support paladin, you can just barrage from afar and we're not done. There's, there's a lot more support here. Now we have divine bolt synergies. So there was already a good amount of divine bolt synergy in the game and now we're getting more divine bolts and that is just that's just insane so you cast divine bolt at nearby enemies when you directly cast healing hands and heal yourself or an ally divine bolt is affected by specific passives from the paladin tree and if you take this node then divine bolt will from all sources scales with nodes on this tree as you can see here it's not just one divine bolt at one enemy it's multiple divine bolts at nearby enemies and it looks to be here that you can do up to five divine bolts per cast if you put five uh, points into this and you'll want to check out the paladin passive tree to see all the other amazing divine bolt synergies we have in there okay next up we have turning healing hands into a traversal skill now this is amazing it doesn't require a target, so it's technically better than lunge. It has a pretty high cooldown, but you're immune while moving. Whenever you directly use healing hands, mind you, so you can use the so you can use it as a traversal skill and have it automatically proc off of your melee skills at the same time, because it says there in the Rise Chariot node, this does not affect indirect cast of healing hands. So you can do a crazy. You can just go. So you can just go crazy. You can go bazinko bazonkos, dude. Where you'll just be moving around super fast. You're gonna be healing up a ton. Okay, Seraph Blade turns healing hands into a melee skill. So instead of just casting healing hands on melee, you can just turn it into a melee skill yourself. Now does that stack with the previous node that makes it cast when you use a melee skill? I don't know. However, this is dope. You can turn it into a melee fire skill. Now, <laughs> you can do like a righteous two-hand paladin like mace build. It just seems dope. Because there's a lot of fire damage synergy in this tree specifically, it seems like forge guards are going to be able to make use of this as well so if you wanted to do a forge guard and you wanted some sustain i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure forge guards have that now okay here's a channeled sky beam healing hands becomes channeled and you don't get the sky beam just from that node and it casts four times a second regardless of cast speed so so that's one scaling like modifier that you don't need to worry about you can worry about everything else and then you can get the sky beam while channeling. Now in total, that's 15 mana cost per second. And when you're channeling, you don't regenerate mana. So I don't know how you're gonna go about sustaining this if you wanted to make this viable, but goddamn, this is, goddamn, this is sick. I mean, dude, I mean, just look at, the first, the first sentence is, who doesn't like a sky beam, bro? Everyone loves a good sky beam. All right, and that was it for healing hands. Now we're gonna go over the replacement of ice storms on Primalist, which is the gathering storm skill. Now, now this is a melee spammable skill. You can see there has zero mana cost. It's gonna be available from level two and it has a lot of synergies. It has 
way, way too many synergies. All right, it has freezing synergy that scales alongside attunement. So you already stack a lot of attunement on Primalist in a lot of builds. So freezing and cold versions of all Primalist builds, you start to you start to stack up a lot of attunement. So that's amazing there. And you can turn the shock into frost by chance and you convert the lightning tag for a cold tag. And it has a decent base freeze rate. So that's awesome. You can turn it into a ranged storm bolt when you're using a staff. It costs six five mana instead of zero. So who knows uh, how much you'll be able to spam it in conjunction with all your other skills. But if you wanted like a main damage skill, I'm sure that this is definitely in the works. And whenever you expend a storm stack while dual wielding, you now cast storm bolts at two enemies instead of one. So there's your, there's your like Lagan esque role playing auto attacker, lightning storm, like lightning storm over the ocean type build. Oh, it's gonna be, that's just gonna be so sick. All right, whenever you use a companion ability, you expend storm stacks over the next 0.3 seconds. Storm bolts trigger this way, deal more damage. All right. So there's a lot of ways to like reset companion abilities and to spam companion abilities. So this will be awesome, especially if you use them with the storm crows, then that's a lot of lightning and it's a lot of damage, I'm sure. And now we have the Tempest Strike rework. This, I'm excited for this. Tempest Strike has always been kind of uh, very niche and not that many people like it, but we all love the concept of it, you know? So if we zoom in here, we see Tempest Strike, a melee combo attack that cycles through a Cold Strike, Physical, and Lightning Strike that trigger elemental Tempest spells of the same damage type if the strikes hit at least one enemy. Cold Strike triggers a Frigid Tempest, which is a cold projectile that pierces through enemies. Physical Strike triggers a Wind Tempest, which is a small twister that lasts a short duration, dealing physical damage over time. And Lightning Strike triggers a Thunder Tempest, which is an expanding storm of lightning bolts. It's, I mean, it's, it's sick. It's sick. It's sick. We can see here a quick example of that. You can just see everything happening all the time. It just looks dope. And there are other skills within different Primalist Masteries that also complement this. And very specifically in Shaman, you'll probably see a lot of Shaman Tempest Strikers. It'll be pretty sick. Now here we have a note for it. While transformed and you use any melee attack, and hit at least one enemy, you have a chance to cast each Tempest of a matching damage type. This consumes mana equal to a portion of Tempest Strike's mana cost now. Now this is dope. I'm pretty sure if you only deal physical damage, you'll only cast the Twister. If you only deal cold damage, you'll only cast the projectile that pierces. And if you only deal lightning damage, you'll only make the lightning strike. So you'll be able to like focus on whichever one you want to scale the most alongside other skills, of course. Now Tempest Sacrificing. Let's see this. Wow. Tempest Strike can no longer cast the cold skill, but it does not remove the cold strike from the combo. Additionally, Tempest Strike has increased attack speed and costs less mana. Okay. Same thing with the lightning one. Uh, whenever you cast Wind Tempest, you have a chance to also cast Tornado. And Tornado is a, a skill in the, in the Shaman Mastery. This consumes mana equal to a portion of Tornado's mana cost. So we're getting indirect Tornado casting which is so cool this is so cool you're gonna be able to make some crazy typhoon builds like it'll be sick it'll be sick yeah and you see there the the tornado skill actually has fire um has fire synergy so you can turn it into like a flaming tornado and it's being auto casted by this oh my god oh my god okay there's totem support your tempest totems Gain a random, okay, you can now create a Tempest Totem that casts a Tempest of the corresponding strike that created the totem. You are limited to one of each type of totem. Okay, you can get three more totems from this. Hello? Look at this. Hello? The amount of damage. So this finally enables an amazing Storm Shaman totem build. I, I think this is going to be broken. I think this is going to be broken. Oh my god. Okay. If you want to add more Tempest, here we go. Just keep it simple. Oh, you have a chance to cast the physical Tempest, the lightning Tempest, and the cold Tempest uh, up to 40% chance of each whenever you cast either of the other two. Okay, this is just dope. So you're just, you're just casting a lot. You're just casting a lot of Tempest, just, just like crazy. Okay, that, that's dope. That's just awesome. That's just awesome. And now we'll go over the new enemy models and the enemies that are being taken out of the game and replaced and also new companion models for Primalist. 
Here's the Void Prophet. These are going to replace the Void Clerics, which are those kind of chunky boys with the staff that you see in a lot of those early areas of the game that are annoying and get you uh, and cause you to be one shot a lot of the time. So we'll see. Yeah, it says here there should be far fewer travelers suddenly evaporating in the presence of Void Prophets without clear telegraphing. It's, it's happened more than once. I guess these are gonna be like new trash mobs um, instead of many of the currently generic cultist enemies. And then here we have the corrupted, the fully corrupted cultist. It looks like it's gonna be pretty slow considering like what the feet look like and everything. So this is a really cool design, except it's saying that this is an ambushing pack creature. Okay, these boys are gonna be dealing physical and probably a good amount of necrotic damage, probably hybrid. And if they pop up, I mean, it just looks like they're gonna one shot you if you stick around them too long. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So it seems like they'll probably be burrowed into the ground and then they'll pop up and just decimate mages everywhere. Bone Sculptor, wow. That's a dope ass. That is dope. There's really nothing else to say. That's just dope. Oh, oh, they all, okay. So they're a necromancer. So they create hordes of zombies if left unattended. Okay. And then they'll also attack you in the middle. All right. Um, This is probably going to be an annoying unit <laughs> for a lot of builds. It's probably going to have decently high health. This looks like one of the like major mobs where a magic or a rare version of this mob is going to take so much time to kill. Anyways, good luck with that. Flame Paladins, the new one-shotters of Act 1. I can guarantee there are going to be so many hardcore players that are just going to restart instantly. Just like that, as soon as they get tapped by this two-hand sword. Like, look at this. And they bring new abilities. Just, like, bro, these these boys, are, Act 1 was already too hard. They're, it's just going to get way harder. <laughs> new companion models. Primal Raptor. I just like that a lot. I like that a lot. Even has the feathers like a real Velociraptor would have. Like that's just, I like, that's a good, <laughs> that's a really good attention to detail. Okay, this boy looks badass. What? He looks like an Apex. He looks like an Apex champion. I forget which one. I don't know, it looks pretty sick. Primal Sabertooth. Look at him eyebrows. Look at those eyebrows. I mean, that's a cool, I mean, it's a saber tooth. It's a cool saber tooth. Look, even like the twin tails in the back. But I mean, look at those eyebrows. <laughs> those are huge eyebrows. Oh, and we're also getting new armor sets for free. These are not MTX. These will just be in the base game. Crazy concept. Cool, cool, cool. The first one, pretty decent. This one's pretty cool. I like this one. I like that one. The shield. I don't know about the shield, but the, everything else, yeah, I'm pretty safe, pretty safe. All right, this one, yeah, basic, like, brigand-like look. Okay, hold up. All right, what's, what's going on here? This is, uh, this is just dope. I mean, this is just dope. Oh, my God, that looks so cool from up top. Okay. All right, yeah, basic little, yeah, basic little feathery, like, primal set, whatever. Okay, but, okay, just straight, like, oh... Oh, this looks, oh, this looks insane. Like just a berserking primalist. It just looks so cool. Acolyte, oh, this is dope. What? This is just like a, an early basic set. That's, that's awesome. It's one of the most unique helmets I've seen. That's dope. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is sick as fuck. Why, why do like necromancer archetypes always get the, always get the sickest looking armor sets? Like, what is this? Mage. What are we doing here? What are the, those look like? Okay, their physics are actually pretty cool. <laughs> I was gonna say they look like long sticky notes, but then when you see them from up top, like look at that, they're like bouncing and swaying. Hold up, let's let's zoom in on this. Look at that, the bounce and the sway. That's sick. This is my favorite armor set by far. Okay, yeah, yeah, king, king. This is dope. This is dope. Bro, royalty, royalty, oh my god, mages are, yeah, that's, that sums up the average mage player for sure though. I'm super excited for the next three blog posts as well, be sure to check back in in a few more days, it's going to be a couple days before the 1.0 launch of Last Epoch, and I will see you next time.